Welcome back. Nigeria's former Vice President Tiko Bubakar has again emerged as the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Abubakar defeated 12 other candidates in a keenly contested presidential primary held at the Mushuda Biola Stadium in Abuja on Saturday. Now, of the six, 767 accredited ballots at the election, he polled uh, a total of 371 votes, while his closest challenger, Governor of River State, Ienson Wike, came second with 200 and 37 votes. Nigeria's former Senate President Buko Lasaki scored 70 votes to come a distant third, while Governor of Akwaibom State Udomi Mano came fourth with 38 votes. Now, the only female in the race, Olivia uh, Dina, and another contestant, Sam Ohabuwa, scored one vote each. A former president of the Senate, Ayim Pius Ayim, scored 14 votes, while Bauchi State Governor Bala Muhammad scored 20 votes. All the contestants, including former Governor Ayodele Fayeshe of Ikiti State and magazine publisher Dele Momodu got no votes. That's zero votes. A total of 12 votes from that primary were recorded as invalid. Uh, what are the chances of a Tiko Abubakar ahead of the 2023 presidential elections? Look at that later. But let's analyze the primary itself. We would like to say good morning and welcome to our guest on the program this morning, Professor Chris Mustafa Wakobia Jr. He is a convener of the Country First Movement. Prof, good morning to you. Good morning. It's my pleasure to join you. Um, were, were you surprised at what played out at the PDP primary at the velodrome of the Abuja National Stadium on Saturday? No, I wasn't surprised. It was clear that it was going to happen that way, particularly when a few days before that event, uh, former Governor of Anambra State, Peter B. withdrew and resigned from the party. And then a few hours before, uh, precisely on Friday or so, um, the other contestant, um, Hayatuddin, withdrew from the race. And then we had quite a lot of uh, information about, if you like, the dollarization of the process. And so uh, when Governor Tambua, the governor of Sokoto State, withdrew from the race, it was very clear that uh, it was going to be a race for the highest bidder. Hmm. Interesting. Um, uh, do you think Peter B is, uh, Peter B is now vindicated, um, having withdrawn from the PDP and uh, pitched his tent with another party? Some have said, well, he saw the writing on the wall and knew he was not going to defeat and win that money contest. No, I, I think that if you... If we were to assess Peter B's uh, decision dispassionately, he knew that uh, what happened on Saturday uh, to, to, Saturday, to, to Sunday morning was going to be, uh, like Shil Sani described it, uh, a major bidding process. And he knew that there were those with deep pockets who would out outbid him. It was more of uh, the highest guitar than about philosophy, about propaganda, about proposal, about policy, and about vision. You know, it's, uh, it's a tragedy of sorts, and that is why some of us are saying to the ruling party that they must show character by refusing to dollarize the process, by refusing to make it a beating of sorts, and by giving it to uh, competency, youth, and capacity, if you like. Uh, w w w were you impressed by the, the speeches given by the uh, contestants at that primary? We heard from the likes of Saraki, we heard from Wiki, uh, at Tambua. Well, he didn't really necessarily give a speech, but um, to tell us what he was going no, to do. Yeah, were you impressed? We talked out most of the candidates, uh, good, good talkers. Without doubt, uh, they were able to convey um, what they intend to do. But largely, what should count is the fact that we all know what was at the uh, at the core of of the of the of the politicking at the primaries. Remember that before the voting proper started, 
It was all over the social media and across very credible press that some candidates were doling as much as $20,000, some were doling as much as $15,000, some $10,000, and then uh, it, it was just about the highest bidder. And I think that the time has come for us to interrogate our political process. Uh, if we must bet the Nigeria that we want, if we must cause the resetting, the fixing, and the reworking of Nigeria, we must depend on policy uh, enunciation, on manifesto delivery, on competency, on capacity, on passion and commitment to the common good. It shouldn't be about delegates uh, gathering somewhere and voting for the highest bidder. We must repudiate it. We must lampoon it. We must ask our parties to do right, fight, and right. Uh, operators of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission were seen on social media videos um, entering the venue, the velodrome, at the Abuja National Stadium, the Moshida Biola uh, Stadium. And uh, some videos even showed them uh, stopping some passers-by, some uh, members of the party who were carrying Ghana must go bags, um, asking them to open so they could inspect the contents of the Ghana must go bag. Um, uh, has the EFCC, um, should they be doing anything about you know uh, the financing uh, of election and the dollarization of primaries in in the various parties and have they gone about it the right way in fact in line with what you have just raised or the question you just asked is the fact that uh, we're aware that that morning and through to the voting period the team from the efcc stormed the event on the venue because of the allegation regarding the dollarization, the monetization of the entire process. I am not saying by this intervention that uh, only the PDP is guilty of such. But I am saying that the time has come for us to interrogate the process. And since the ruling party hasn't conducted its primaries, it must make competency, capacity, youth and commitment to the common good, the common body. It must make commitment, the linchpin, in its decision to produce a, a candidate that will face the PDP in the 2023 general election. That's the way to go. We must, we must begin to think about how we bet and bet the Nigerian collective things. And the monetization of the political process the dollarization of primaries and, uh, and the process by which candidates are managed in other words. All right. Uh, um, what do we need to do to get to the point where uh, party primaries are about ideas? about you know philosophies ideologies and agendas you know uh, we've watched uh, you know party conventions and primaries of political parties across the world and it's always um, a meeting of ideas you get a sense of the ideology and the direction of the party and the things that matter to them in the speeches that are given uh, people look forward to these speeches and stars are bathed you know political stars are bathed uh, you know, in some of these speeches or through some of these speeches that are given at these uh, primaries or conventions. And um, what do we need to go? This is one of the biggest parties in Nigeria. And we, we couldn't get a sense of what the party wanted to do, their direction, their philosophy and ideology. How can we get there? All right. Uh, we have lost uh, our guests. We'll try and get back to... Uh, uh, Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobia Jr., who's the convener of the country first movement. Let's let's get back to the velodrome at the Moshuda Biola Stadium in Abuja and listen to what some of the um, uh, contestants had to say. We start with uh, Waziri Aminu Tambuao, governor of Sakwato State, uh, who's contesting for that ticket for the second time, having done so for the first time in 2019. He was expected to give his speech, telling the delegates what he intended to do if elected. Uh, the flag bearer of the party, but instead he said, "What? I'm not. I'm not interested anymore. I'm stepping down for uh, Atiku Abubakar." Let's listen to Aminu Tambo. 
I, Aminu Waziri Tambual, having consulted widely throughout the length and breadth of this country, from the southeast to the south south, to the southwest, to the north central, northeast, and indeed northwest consulted so many leaders and my supporters have come to the firm belief and conviction that as leaders time may come in our sojourn to make sacrifice for the good of the people. And in view of the situation of our country and the need for us in our party to minimize rancor and jostling for power, in any case, it is not always about one individual. It must always be about our country. I have come to the conclusion that, to the glory of God Almighty, seen and from the result of what I have seen throughout the country, millions of Nigerians suffering and the need for us to close ranks in the party. And as one of the leaders of this party, I have come to a patriotic conclusion to step down my aspiration and not only that, but I appeal to my supporters to take this in good stride and in the hands of national unity, patriotism, and not only that, those who are delegates here should vote for Alhaji Atiku Abubakar Wazir Adama. PDP! All right, interesting uh, speech, and of course, uh, our Zira Mini Tambua, uh, governor of Sokoto State, stepping down uh, from that uh, contest. It was believed that uh, uh, Mr. Tambua also drew from the race, uh, then tilted the race in favor of the former Vice President uh, Tiko Wakar. Back with us is uh, Chris Mustafa and Wokobia Jr. Uh, Professor Wokobia, can you hear us, please? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Do you agree that, um, um, you know, uh, Tambwal's um, stepping down tilted the primary in favor of Atiku. We hear that um, he garnered quite a number of uh, delegate support, especially those from the southeastern part of the country. And also some people feel that if he had participate, participated in that primary, um, that his participation would have divided the northern vote. And that was what uh, helped Atiku, you know, when he withdrew. Your analysis is very correct. But let me say that by that decision, Tambual broke the heart of several millions of followers of his who are young people who are desirous of seeing a new Nigeria where contemporary issues and debate denominate our politics, where policy articulation is profound and profuse where young men who are agile, young men and women who are agile, competent, and have the capacity to govern are allowed to emerge on our political stage. To withdraw for a 75-year-old Atiku Abubakar was a shot in the feet for his, his politics and all those who have consistently admired him. And when he has his decision, he, like you noted, it was some kind of Northern solidarity. But I think that we must put country first in deciding to take certain political decisions. You know, by no means what he did 
swayed about 185 Northwest votes in favor of the Waziri of Adamawa Tuku Abubakar. But for me, and so many people who care about our country, uh, Atiku has done his bit in his politics. The time has come for us to try something new and different. The time has come for us to try youth. The time has come for us to try diversity. And I say advisedly that in the most Halicean periods of our nation, the best of our history, it was men in their 30s, 40s, and 50s that govern this country. Both on in, in the first republic, republic where we had civil rule and through the period of military rule. It was under the military that we had Abuja. Abuja was built by leaders who were less than 60. The first republic, the oldest of them was just about 60. What we need to refix, reposition, and find our country is about competency, capacity, and youth. We want people who can think on their toes. We want people who can walk and walk hours on their feet. We want people who are in tandem with contemporary global reality. No matter how smart Atiku Abubaka is, Nigeria needs a man who can walk night and day who can sit with the best across the world to debate issues about economics, about job creation, about education, and about national security. So I lampoon with vehemence that decision of Allah Tambuwa. All right. Uh, we'll look at, at the, the performance uh, of uh, ES on Wiki in what was uh, a keenly contested um, uh, uh, primary and a battle for the, uh, the votes of the delegates of the PDP across the country. Um, I think it's been a while since we saw such crisscrossing, um, uh, you know, uh, campaigns around the country. Let's listen to what River State Governor Yeson Wike said uh, in his speech for about three minutes, and we'll be back with our guest for more analysis. PDP! You are not doing it as if you want to take over power. PDP! Power! 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 Your Excellencies, our dear leaders, very important delegates today, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I have come to your states to speak to you. Today is for me to thank you. It's for me to thank you for the energy since morning you have been here because of this party. Thank you, special delegates. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I will speak to you on two issues. One is the party. All my alumni vow today, anybody who emerges here, I will support the person to the fullest. Anybody who emerges here today, I will support the person to the fullest because I'm a committed party person because I love this party because since 1998 I've been in this party. I work for this party. I will not go anywhere. This is my party. Secondly, if I am here today, every state that has a problem, it is my duty to make sure the party is united. We we'll unite everybody to make sure we we'll win this election 2023. You know, 
I didn't come here today to tell you about theory. What is the problem with Nigeria? Leadership. Leadership is the major problem with uh, Nigeria. Therefore, PTP, you must not make mistakes. You must have a courageous leader, a fearless leader, somebody who can withstand APC. And it is me, it is me. Please, please, my dear delegates, my dear delegates, send me for this assignment. Let me go and win APC. I will win APC for the power to come back to PDP on behalf of Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting. Uh, your thoughts on that speech, uh, Mustafa Wakobia? Hello, Prof. Are you there, sir? I can hear you, yes. Yeah, okay. Your, th your thoughts on that speech. What? Do you want my take on yes. his speech? Yes, yes. Oh, Wike has always been a pro-PDP, uh, a very loyal PDP leader. He has um, shown that in so many ways. But I think that his silence and quiet since uh, he lost the primaries to Elijah Tiku Abubakar is suspect. Well, I am aware that people are reaching out to him. I'm aware that he, because of that speech, may be compelled to mend fences and walk with Elijah Tiku Abubakar. But above all, I think that his pain will be located at the fact that PDP desperately wants to come back to power. And to use uh, a candidate who is 75 years old, he will be 76, I guess, next year, uh, for a challenge against the APC may not have been the best decision. I hope and pray that the APC will understand the urgency of now. I hope and pray that the APC will realize, like Mr. President said at some point, that if he were younger, he would have done better as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And don't forget that he became president about the age of 73. Atiku is older than the age at which President Buhari became president. So what we have before us is going to be a contestation largely of the old and the young order, if the APC does the needful. What is before us is a contestation between old ideas and new ideas about vibrancy, competency, and youth, and the old order. And I believe that Nigeria largely, and that's perhaps the pain of Governor Wiki, Nigeria largely will want to try something new. I believe that together as a people, we can interrogate the parties and interrogate leadership. I believe that we must make parties understand that whatever they do must be in tandem with the mood of the nation and the mood of the people. You cannot, as a nation, consistently tell the young people that they are leaders of tomorrow. And when the tomorrow comes, you return power to the old. The time has come for us as a nation to do a moral re re reawakening and chart a new course for our country. We must reset, refix, and redefine this nation. And that's perhaps the pain that Governor Wiki has wherever he is. Mm. Um, uh, uh, amongst the leading contenders for that, uh, that ticket, you know, you have the likes of uh, Tika Wokar, uh, Saraki, and Wiki. Of course, Tambo was a strong contender. But amongst those three, initial three I mentioned, uh, Wiki was the only one who uh, had remained in the PDP all his political life. And he made a point to say that he has been a member of the PDP since 1998. Uh, of course, Saraki was part of the NPDP that moved to the APC. And of course, Atiku, of course, had already been in the PDP. Do you think that the party has failed to reward loyalty? Well, uh, that's the language. That is the, that's the conjecture. That's the conclusion. But for me, uh, the, the, the party shouldn't have judged uh, Atiku harshly 
the party wouldn't have judged um, Sarah, Sarah T. T. Hashley. For me, what I think is that the party should have weighed the mood of the nation and what the largest voted, the voter demography would have wanted. You are aware that women and the young people have over 70% of the voter, voter population. And so if the PDP did what it, it did in that uh, primary without putting in consideration these fundamentals, then I'm afraid that uh, the party is ready or unwittingly to lose the 2023 election. I hope and pray that the APC wouldn't work that way, because if it does, obviously you will have perhaps the third force emerge. Because I, I, I want to say without fear of a provocation that Nigerians are not ready to continue to try the same old uh, setting. It must be about a new order, a new thinking, a new dispensation, and a new disposition and leadership. That's what Nigerians are asking for. Unfortunately, regarding Wike, the PDP, like you noted, appears not to have um, paid back his loyalty properly. But, but maybe he just might emerge as the vice presidential candidate. That's what we hear they are talking about. But for me, what is largely important is for us to redefine our politics and show that issues rather than money ensure that competency and capacity rather than dollar becomes the basis, becomes the linchpin of our politics. All right. Uh, already uh, pro-zoning uh, uh, voices have, uh, have risen up to slam the result of this election in the People's Democratic Party. Um, you have leaders of uh, thought and elder statesmen from four of the six geopolitical zones in the country uh, under the ages of the Southern and Middle Belt uh, Leaders Forum uh, comprising, you know, the uh, pan Niger Delta Forum, uh, the... Um, the Southwestern Bloc, and you also have the Middle Belt Forum as well. They have lampooned the PDP. Obviously, this is a kick, um, not good, not a good kick for the uh, those who are saying the power must rotate to the South, and particularly the Southeast, which the uh, Southern Middle Belt leaders from had already said in the past they support the rotation of the presidency to the Southeast in particular. I am not one of those who subscribe to. In one of your programs, I've said that repeatedly that I do not subscribe to zoning because we should not, in trying to solve today's problems, create more for tomorrow. And I say this advisedly. If your son were to become the best item after you were by Providence made president of this country, they will tell your son that your dad has ruled and so it has to be zoned to some, some other and you don't, in trying to solve problems, deny people the right to contest. What is important is for you to make yourself sellable enough. It was in this country at some point that we had a Muslim Muslim ticket, and people died in defense of that ticket. I'm talking about a Biola Kingibe ticket. And so I, I think that the time has come for our country, men and women, to instead of conversing banal issues like zoning, we should talk about restructuring our country in a line for true fiscal federalism, a line for devolution of power, a line states to control their police and create rep requisite bodies to ensure that there is no abuse. I think that the time has come for us to model our federation like all other federalisms in the world. All right. Uh, we seem to have an issue with that connection. We'll go back to the uh, footage from the PDP presidential primaries right there at the velodrome of the Moshira Biola Stadium, Abuja. Let's listen to uh, Bukola Saraki, former governor of Kara State and former president of the Nigerian Senate, give his speech. PDP! Power to the youth! Power to the moon!
Your Excellency, the chairman of our great party, leaders of this great party, distinguished delegates from the 774 local governments, let me join all of us to welcome you to our national convention. Let me also commend the efforts of the convention committee led by my own boss, David Mark. Through him, let me commend all the members for this well-planned program. Distinguished delegates, we are here today at a defining moment in the history of our country. A defining moment because when we think about the events that are happening in our country today, for decades we will say it had never, never could have happened. But today we are here. We are here at a moment of decision. A moment that we must choose hope over hopelessness. A moment that we must choose peace and security over fear and terror. A moment that we must choose unity over disunity and exclusion. Distinguished delegates, as we stand here, we ask ourselves, what is our role? We are only 774 delegates, but the destiny of 200 million Nigerians is in your hands. It's in your hands, the destiny of 200 million Nigerians. And that is why it is so important that we get it right this evening. You ask yourself, how do we get it right? We get it right by the kind of candidate we elect today. We must elect a candidate that has the capacity. We must elect a candidate that knows the issues. We must elect a candidate that can unite this country. We must elect a candidate who from day one knows what he has to do. We must elect a candidate whose experience has shown that he can lead Nigeria forward. That responsible, distinguished delegate is what is before you tonight. I believe, and I know that I'm a candidate that ticks all those boxes. By my experience, I am somebody who has worked in the private sector, who has worked in the executive, and who has been head of legislative arm of government. Every office I have positioned myself in, I have left it better. Today, you need someone who knows about government, who knows about legislative arm of government, and who knows about business. You need a Nigerian for all Nigerians. You need a Nigerian that will breed the North and the South. You need a Nigerian that will build the young and the old. You need a Nigerian that will build Muslims and Christians together. You need a Nigeria that unites all together. Distinguished delegates, as you step out this evening, as you step out this evening, look for that candidate that will change the direction of this country. Let us be that generation that begins to do things right in this country. And it can start from tonight by the type of candidate we elect. Let us elect Abubakar Bukola Saraki, who will, who will lead this country who will take this country to a brighter future. Distinguished delegates, I thank you for this honor to be here to speak to you. Let us, as I say, enough talk. Let us go and fix Nigeria. Let us start that fixing Nigeria by going out to vote. I thank you. God bless you all. Thank you so much. All right, uh, um, Bukola Saraki there. Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobia Jr., can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. Be before I come back to you, let's quickly listen to the speech of uh, Tiko Abubakar and we'll quickly analyze the chances of the party and also look at the chances of the, the man, Tiku, um, who is uh, taking a shot at the presidency for the fifth time. All right. While we're trying to get that, um, uh, that sorted out, um, your thoughts on Tiku Abubakar? He's taking a shot at the presidency for, for the fifth time. Uh, this should be the, a record as far as Nigeria is concerned. Let me say that uh, the speech by Abubakar Bukola Saraki was the most electrifying of the night. Oh, really? 
the attempt of the, the, the primaries prepared. He articulated his position, raised the issues. And I feel, listening again to him, I feel like the PDP lost an opportunity of presenting an urbane and smart uh, mobilizer as its candidate. In not voting him, they lost that opportunity. In not voting with him, they lost uh, the emotion and the passion of his age. But what do we say? We're not going to continue to dwell on it. Uh, let me say that what is important is that uh, even in his acceptance speech, Alaji Atiku Abubakar was able to capture some of the fundamental issues that border our country. But I will, in this discussion, challenge the All Progressive Congress to think about the urgency of now, to think about the preponderant passion and fervor of the young people and women for a new Nigeria, to think about putting before Nigerians a candidate that is congruent with con contemporary realities, to put before Nigerians capacity, competency, and youth, with emphasis, youth. Because the time has come for us to fold our sleeves and fold our pants, our shirts, our trousers in service of our country. We must understand that the time is and now, for all those who truly believe in Nigeria, to work, to bet, and bet a new Nigeria. And that chance, the chance that the PDP blew or threw away, all other parties must take. Nigerians want youth and diversity. Nigerians want competency and capacity. Nigeria want a new idea. We want a leader who's strong enough to challenge for our place in the new world. You said, of course, you initially say you've talked about the fact that people had a chance uh, to elect someone with youth and vibrancy and ideas. You've, you've pointed a finger at, uh, uh, you've singled out uh, Abu Saraki. You've also said, of course, it lost out on the vibrancy of uh, Yeso Miki. Now, the PDP with a tiku at, at its head, uh, if they end up winning the election, will still have these people in the administration. Possibly, um, you've talked about the talk around town that uh, Wiki may be offered the uh, running mate position or slot on this particular ticket. Um, with all these people around the tiku, if he chooses to work with them, he's made a deal, he said to have made a deal with Tambuwa, um, we might see some movement in the direction of Wiki. Uh, Bukula Saki is in the picture a bit, and all these other people who came out to be part of this um, yeah, this primary. With all these people in the fold of the PDP, I am Pius, I am and Co, is the party the right one to, as they say they want to do, rescue Nigeria from its current travails? No, let me let me say largely that uh, I first will applaud your proper analysis and uh, an understanding of the issues. But I know that it just might be difficult for Anyin Pius Anyin to accept to run as the vice presidential candidate because of the threats from the southeast. And then it also might be difficult for uh, Yeso Muslim Wike to accept, but the party may prevail. Uh, but what is largely important is that the PDP must understand that it has got its job well cut out for it. Uh, the party must wake up to the reality and the urgency of now. They must wake up to try as much as possible to connect with the people, connect with the women, connect with the aged and the young. They must convince Nigerians that uh, with the 75-year-old Waziri Adamawa, they can work to rebuild Nigeria. I doubt, but, but they have a big job on their hands. I believe also that the media must interrogate effusively, profusely, profoundly, if you like, the candidates as they emerge. We must put them through the crucible and ensure that we give to Nigerians the best 
come 2023. Hmm. We hmm. must understand that we cannot continue to run our country the same old way. Oh. New ideas and new thinking is what has changed nations, and that is what we must adopt going forward. Uh, Prof, Prof, let's listen quickly to Atiko Bokar. Um, we would take that video clip now uh, of his speech at the primary, and when we return, we would round off. Today, we are making another history. A history which we believe will bring about fundamental changes in governance and also in our political processes. It is a win to redirect Nigeria, to rebuild Nigeria. It is a win to rescue Nigeria. And it is a win to change the narrative of our country. And for we, the young people particularly, we believe in uh, finally, very brief, quickly, um, uh, Professor, will Atiku be able to, I mean, galvanize, put together a strong team? I mean, we know his age and the fact that he's starting off uh, older than Buhari was when Buhari started off. But does he have uh, the character, uh, the ideas and the outlook to be able to put together a strong team of technocrats and um, a strong team of, of, of Nigerians who have the ideas that, and the drive that you're talking about to execute the rescue operation for Nigeria? I doubt. But let me say also that um, he's a good man manager of man. He may be able to get some young ideologues who will join him. But the point, like uh, what obtained in 2014, 2015, when so many of us were behind the emergence of President Mohamed Buhari, we cannot forget or ignore the fact that our dear president has humbly accepted and admitted that if he were younger, he would do much better than he's doing today. So what we're saying is that the APC must not go the same route this time. Uh, Atiku is the PDP choosing to go the route of the APC in 2014-2015. And the APC must go a different route by presenting youth capacity and competency to Nigerians. I doubt the competency and the capacity of Atiku Abubakar Jabudifai to reposition at any Nigeria. We need a leader in 2023 who can think on his feet, who can walk long hours on unaided, who can engage people and engage the world and world leaders with profound intelligence and competency. And that's the minimum that Nigerians expect come 2023. All right. I doubt if Atikwa Abu has, right. has the cards to meet that reality. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chris Mustafa Wokobia, Jr., convener of uh, the Country First Movement, for your uh, outstanding analysis. You're reaching us live from Abuja via a phone call. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. And that's the size of a package right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. On what has been a beautiful Monday morning. We still have fantastic programs coming up on this station. Keep watching up next, the news at 9. My name is Kofi Bartels. I return tomorrow. Good morning.